Kiki, do you wish you were coming with us? I know, I'm sorry. All right, guys. Good morning from Dublin. We were just touched down from Red Eye in New York City. Didn't get much sleep, but it's all right. We'll power through it. Plan today, going uh, to Dublin, and we're going straight to exploring. Can't even check in yet. Very similar, very similar to what we did in Italy. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for some Dublin content. All right, what is up guys? Ram and Shan officially have made it to Dublin, Ireland. As you can see around me, we're staying at the Mott Hotel back there, which is in a great location. Uh, it's only a two, I think two about two blocks away from Grafton Street. Uh, it's really close to Temple Bar. So the plan today is pretty much just seeing all the main attractions that uh, Dublin has to offer without getting hit by a car. <laughs> so we were told by the guy at the hotel that walking down St. Stephen's Green right there behind me is like the main walk to take you to Grafton Street but before Grafton Street which is like all the retail shops there's Dawson Street and I guess Dawson Street is good for restaurants and bars Shan's already doing some window shopping uh oh uh oh those are Rolexes, Shan. You like watches. I do like watches. <laughs> so there is this beautiful, beautiful spot called Cafe in Shin. It's been open for 30 years. Me and Shan just had some brunch here. Walking around, it's on Dawson Street. Highly recommend coming here. This is beautiful. So we just got to the Guinness Storehouse. It's the most recommended thing by everyone to do. It's where all the Guinness is made. I don't know about that, but it's the headquarters of Guinness. And I heard the Guinness here tastes better than anywhere else in the United States. So we shall see. I also have the hiccups, so hopefully a pint will cure me. So far, Guinness Factory is awesome. Other than the fact that you get to try some amazing beer from the from the source, you also get to learn about Arthur Guinness. And one crazy fact was that he had 21 kids. And out of the 21, I think only 10 survived. And they carried on the Guinness family uh, business and name. So no excuse, guys. 21 kids and he still did it. Crazy. Okay, so first of all, hello, everybody. And welcome to our tasting rooms. All right, Shan. They say that Guinness tastes different slash better in Ireland, especially at the Guinness factory. Cheers. I like it. Much better. Way creamier, way more tasty. Yeah, it's. I did not explain it. It's just like creamier. We gotta get this in the States. Alright, guys, so we just left the Guinness storehouse and on the way to St. Patrick's, Patrick's, Patrick's Cathedral. I can't talk right now. I think I had too, too many Guinness. I'm also hiccuping. This isn't good. One thing you could appreciate when you're kind of drunk walking to a church 
is the, the cool little archi architecture here in Dublin. A lot of brick houses, very small. Seem like they've been here forever. What do you think about it? Sh Shan, you like it? All right, guys, we are currently getting lost around Dublin. Don't really know where we're at right now, but it seems to be a popular area. This is Drury Street. And one way I would explain Dublin is it's a city of bricks. All the, all the buildings I see around are all just red bricks. Looks really old. Shan likes it. Shan wanted to go down the street because it had all the string lights. It's very inviting, but it's dope. Wow. When you're done too much shopping for your own good. So this is Grafton Street. This is like the main retail strip where you get all your shopping done. It's all right, I like it. I'm not a big fan of all these big retail stores. I like more of the mom and pop shops. So if you were looking for more of that, you go on all the side streets. But it's still pretty cool. It's starting to rain a bit, so we're going to uh, head to dinner now. Same place where Will and Megan Will? Merkel went to Harry. dinner. No, ha Harry. Will is the brother. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Yeah, it's Harry <laughs> and Megan. William. We're going to where they ate dinner, so uh, we'll see how good some uh, fine Irish cuisine is. All right, guys, so it is our first night out eating in Dublin. And one place that I heard had really good reviews and a place that was actually referred by Prince Harry and Meghan Merkel was this, Markle, was this place, Della Hunt, if you want to see it. So there's beautiful Shan looking elegant tonight. And they sat us in this little booth where you can see the rest of the restaurant there. And the menu comes on this little letter you have to open from like a, uh, a wax uh, stamp and it's a tasting menu looks absolutely fire it's here on Camden Street and uh, yeah if you guys when you guys oh shit I want to catch on fire when you guys come to Dublin highly recommend it Della Hunt uh, we'll see uh, what the food looks like in a second this one here is a crispy rice cake with chicken liver pate and then some nashi pear on top. This one here, you have a crispy hash brown with thinly sliced pork head and then a beetroot jelly on top. And this last one here is a dashi cracker with bluefin tuna and then a sprinkle of sesame seeds as well. Oh, thank you. you. <laughs> Our barbecue three quarter asparagus with a wild garlic bisque, and then on the side plate in there is a toasted brioche bread with stuffed morel mushrooms and then crispy chicken skin as well. Thank you. <laughs> so we just had a fantastic. I almost felt like a. It was a it was supposed to be a four course dinner at Della Hunt, but it was probably like eight. They gave us way too much food. It was really good. You guys got to go there. It was little. It was little. It was very but little. It was so good. Very little, but it was so good. But now we're going down to Temple Bar because we haven't even been there yet. We got dropped off down the sketchy alleyway. Look at this. You know what's dope about the sketchy alleyway? It's got cobblestone. You can't wear heels. You can't wear heels, but cobblestone means cool historical significance. And uh, yeah, look at this place though. It's beautiful. Shan, what do you think of the Guinness? I don't know, but it's that good. You can't get it like that. So this is the Temple Bar, and it seems like this whole area is named 
the Temple Bar area. I don't know, they, made a, they might have named it after this bar. But this is, if you have a place where you get foshed in any city. So for example, when you're in New Orleans, you're on Bourbon Street, you get foshed on Bourbon Street, you see a whole bunch of fucking idiots walking around all drunk. That is the equivalent of Bourbon Street, but in Dublin, Ireland. So walking down this street, you're just gonna have a bunch of drunk people hanging out, there's bars everywhere, and uh, you know, little shops everywhere. This is like the touristy area. All right, guys, so it is the end of our first night in Dublin, Ireland. We're, wa we're walking home from a couple of different pubs, great Irish music, and I can't, I can't stop hiccuping. But Shannon here can't stop talking about how much she defends the witches that were burned at the stake during the witch trials in Edinburgh. And she wants to learn more about why they were burned because she believes them. She's on their side. Shannon, I'd love to hear more about how much you like the witchcraft and, and more about all this kind of stuff. Please tell us. Let's wait till Scotland. Oh, now, oh, you were just, she was just <laughs> chirping. She was going, she was going off. Alright guys, so we have just arrived in Cork. A little bit late start, but we're here. Um, we're at the Montanet, I think it's Montanet Hotel. This place is beautiful, check out this view. There's the inside, you get this outside terrace. And there's the city. It's got this like other little cocktail bar lounge, I don't even know what over there. Nice little garden down there. So yeah, I mean we're only here for one night and then we're heading to uh, to Galway, so let's see what uh, Cork nightlife, ha nightlife has to offer. This is downtown Cork. Shan wants to go to a speakeasy called, up, it's called Upstairs? Upstairs. Upstairs. Found it on TikTok. She found it on TikTok, but it looks like it's this place. Let's check it out. Oh, sorry man. Right in here. Oh, nice. Wow. Alright, this is the spot. They're kind of a swanky. Looks like you're in someone's house, like a swanky cocktail lounge. Alright, so this right here, what was your name, bro? What's your name? Thomas. Thomas? So Thomas here shared that Beamish is like Guinness in a way that it's also a very popular Irish drink, but it's got more coffee notes and it's a good alternative if you're all Guinness out. So there you go. On the road to go hiking with alpacas. Shannon hit her head. Drive to the Ring of Kerry is incredible. Look at that. One thing I'd recommend to you guys when you come here, do not get a big car. As you can see, these roads are really small and windy. And if you're obviously from the States, you're already uncomfortable driving on the wrong side of the road. So uh, just be careful. All right, we're about three hours outside of Galway, middle rural Ireland. And the goal is to go hike with alpacas. It's literally why we're driving on this road and why we made it all the way out here on no sleep because of the alpacas. All right, so we are in the middle of nowhere in Ireland uh, on a, looks like a farm, and we're about to go alpaca hiking, we're hiking with alpacas. So let's see how it is. Yeah, he's, um, he's a bit spoiled. We try not to let him outside while we're checking. So there's the llamas. Hi. Llamas are like, what are you guys doing? 
and here's all the alpacas, which we're going to go on a hike with. This is <laughs> your future. <laughs> Alright, so I'm trying to go on this hike with Nibbles. Nibbles is the brightest of the bunch, and somehow we're paired together, but that's okay. There you go. How long have you guys been doing the alpaca hiking? How many? 16 years. Wow. Come on. There we go. It's all right. So over there is the ring of carry. Freshwater lakes in front and then that big body of water coming in is the Atlantic. Oh, wow. And how far is Galway from here? Um, several hours. Yeah, that's where we're going next. Ah, yeah. uh, look at those little houses just by themselves. You go, Herbie. Oh. <laughs> hey, whoa. All right, Nibbles. Come on. They said you weren't smart, but I don't believe them. Let's go. So, what we learned a little bit is that alpacas are animals of prey, so they are at the bottom of the food chain, and when they get scared, what they do is they just run home. They run pretty fast, I guess. And a few things in the forest that um, makes them scared are huge hares that uh, I guess are out here. And when I say huge, I guess they are the size of like small dogs. They probably go up to your hip uh, and they are massive. And so I've never seen a rabbit or hare that big before. And I would love to see one. I don't want, I don't want them to scare you, uh, Nibbles. But I do want to see that. It'd be pretty gnarly to see a rabbit that big, so. Let's hope. Alright guys, we have left the alpaca hiking and we are on the road to the Cliffs of Moher. Shan, what did you think about the alpaca hiking thing? Alpacas are super cute, super friendly. Um, they love food. Yeah, they love food a lot. It's beautiful. I'll drop the link on uh, the Airbnb experience uh, for you guys to do it if you're interested. But once you're done with it, the next place to go if you're on the Wild Atlantic Way is the uh, is Galway. So that's where we're on our way to now. Uh, we're just driving through the back country of Ireland. We're both hella sleepy because we got a horrible sleep last night. But uh, obviously the Cliffs of Moher is probably one of the top attractions in all of Ireland. So. We're stoked for that, and we're very stoked for Galway. We're gonna be there for, for a couple days, and we're gonna see a lot. But, uh, oh, just be careful when you're driving out here. This, the roads are tiny. Ram and Shan here. We have just touched down in Galway, and uh, we are just starting to explore the town. There is a main section, I think they call it the Latin Quarter, which we're going to get dinner at, and uh, just get a nice, uh, vibe of the city. Galway is like the most recommended place uh, that a lot of people told us to come to and uh, we still don't know too much about it so uh, time to go explore. First night in Galway where did we just eat, Shan? Hi, and it was so good. Michelin star rated one of Right there, <laughs> there's the thing. So this place, right next to Kai's, the uh, Crane Bar, and I found it to be the best place in Galway to listen to traditional Irish music, and even has a plaque on the front. Traditional Irish Music Pub of the Year Award. They actually have awards for that. We haven't checked it out yet, but we're about to pop inside and let's see what's up. Sometimes <laughs> the 
Alright guys, life update. Unfortunately it's not a good one. Yesterday Shannon and I got extremely sick from food poisoning. Food poisoning or stomach bug or something we ate. So real first day in Galway and our mostly our time in Galway was spent in a hotel room pretty much throwing up and doing other stuff that you guys probably don't want to know about. So yeah, um, unfortunate, but traveling's not traveling without a little adversity. So we're over it and feeling a little bit better. We are now heading to the Cliffs of Moor, which are about an hour and 30 minutes outside of Galway. So uh, obviously that's a big attraction we're excited to see. And then we're heading to Dublin for our last night before we head to uh, Scotland. So uh, yeah, hopefully no more bad news, but what are you gonna do? Guys are here. Look at that. Matchmaking festival. For any of you single people. All right guys, so we have finally made it to the Cliffs of Moher, and they are breathtaking. Like I've never seen anything like this in my life. Check them out. I can't believe we drove all the way out here. Just taking a life-changing experience, right, Chan? Right. <laughs> Just incredible. You guys have to come out here. You can't see those? I can see them. All right, Ireland. It's been real. Thank you for the good memories. Scotland, we're coming for you. We're coming with this bone hat and good vibes. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. <laughs>